42 applicants have passed the second phase of the Hunter exam and boarded the blimp to their next destination. Kilua once again takes the lead and tells Gon to explore the blimp with him. The two end up settling by a window as Kilua enjoys the view, but Gon is much more interested in getting to know Kilua than sightseeing, and asks about Kilua's parents. Even though I've pointed out how Kilua seeks out Gon and may seem more invested in trying to become friends, this scene is actually the second time Gon has tried to get to know Kilua on a deeper level, the first being when he asks Kilua why he wants to be a hunter. So Kilua tests the waters and actually tells Gon his parents are assassins, even though he immediately tries to play it off like a joke when Gon believed him. This, along with Kilua comparing himself to Hisoka in the first phase, shows how Kilua really wants Gon to know more about him, but has built a defensive wall around himself because of how others, knowing his true lineage, specifically Kanari, have treated him in the past. Gon is able to see right through this act though, and shatters Kilua's defenses with his calm yet curious reaction. Suddenly, all of the emotions Kilua's been bottling up come pouring out as he starts with a serious explanation of his family's business, his anger at them trying to decide his future, and his intense joy at the thought of collecting the bounties on their heads. And it's an important moment that fuels Gon's reaction at the end of the Hunter exam when he finds out what happened between Kilua and Illumi. Enter Netero, the Hunter Association's greatest troll, ready to stir the pot and keep himself entertained. Of course, Kilua sees through all of this trolling, and when he's had enough, he puts his arm around Gon, another sign of his leadership in this relationship, and begins to walk away. Netero's proposal for a game with Hunter licenses as a reward for victory piques both of their interests, though. Kilua takes a cautious yet strategic approach to this contest, starting with his rhythm echo technique, which seriously impresses Gon, and tries to take out Netero's pivot foot when he has trouble matching Netero's speed, also impressing Gon even though it had no effect. To contrast this, Gon rushes in, and his lack of awareness of his surroundings leads him to jump right into the ceiling. For having never fought together though, their teamwork later on does seem pretty impressive, but you can tell it still needs some work because they both rush the ball when victory seems feasible. A better approach would have been to have one of them grab the ball while the other attempts to keep Netero occupied. Also important at this point, and I know I sound like a broken record, but allow me to reiterate, Kilua's leadership in his relationship with Gon is in full effect during this game with Netero. He decides to be first to challenge Netero without consulting Gon. He tells Gon when it's his turn to try, unlike the anime when Gon begs to be tagged in. He lectures Gon for messing up a good chance to attack. And when Kilua realizes how outclassed they are by Netero, he tries to get Gon to give up with him and gets mad when Gon doesn't listen. The conclusion of this game with Netero is very different for both Gon and Kilua. Regardless of what Kilua's internal justification for giving up might be, we know from his analysis of Hisoka and Hanzo's strength that he must realize he stood no chance of getting that ball from Netero. Since his goal seems impossible, he gives up and takes out his frustration on two applicants in the hallway. Gon, on the other hand, sets a smaller goal for himself and celebrates achieving it as if it was a complete victory. This optimistic attitude of Gon's will eventually break through Kilua's defeatism, but it is a very slow process. Trick Tower is where we see our young protagonists next as they team up to find a way to the bottom of this tower. Now that Gon has broken down Kilua's emotional wall, we actually see Kilua start to converse with Leorio and Kurapika, instead of just Gon, even before being forced to compete in this phase together. There are actually a lot of moments during Trick Tower that shape Kilua's view of and relationship with Kurapika and Leorio, and reinforce some of Kilua's personality traits, but as a reminder, I'm only going to point out the ones that relate to Kilua and Gon. When it turns out the floor tiles they jump through lead to the same room, they have a laugh together. As they wait for the fifth applicant to join them, the 2011 anime shows Gon and Kilua sharing their skateboard and fishing rod with each other. But no such scene exists in the manga, so we really don't know what they were up to during that two hour wait. So let's jump ahead to after Tampa concedes his match against one of the convicts, Kilua explains in gruesome detail how Tampa would have gotten wrecked and made the right decision to forfeit so quickly. 
When Gon volunteers to be the next to challenge the convicts, Kila was taken aback since his analysis of the convict didn't discourage Gon. He asks Gon if anything phases him, but by the look on his face it seems to be a rhetorical question. It's like he's having a realization about Gon's personality and starting to have faith in Gon's abilities. The admiring smile on his face when Gon rushes over to blow out the opponent's candle to win the match further solidifies this in my mind. This happens a second time before the next match as well. Kilua is thinking to himself that the next opponent is a phony and has never killed anyone. Gon expresses a similar feeling aloud to Leorio, which surprises Kilua at first. Gon explains his feelings in further detail, and Kilua cracks another admiring smile. The only other noteworthy interaction during this part of Phase 3 is how Kilua continues to be a mentor to a naive Gon, and how Gon is impressed by Kilua's technique to rip out his opponent's heart. When they arrive in the waiting room where they spend the next 50 hours, the 2011 anime depicts Gon and Kilua having a lot of fun horsing around together, and I'm a bit sad that this isn't in the manga, because I really enjoyed seeing the childish side of these two superhuman characters, specifically the hardened Kilua. Instead, the 50 hours fly by in a single page. Of course, one might assume that some sort of meaningful interaction between the two went on during that time, but for all we know, they could have just slept, read books, and watched TV. That being said, the fact that these scenes aren't in the manga make it more believable that Kilua didn't realize he had already become friends with Gon by the end of the exam. The chances they've had to really get to know each other have been few and far between, and they won't have many more during the next two phases, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. The final hurdle of this exam leaves the group with a grave decision. Gon wants to risk time expiring to give the whole group a slim chance to pass the exam, and Kilua disagrees, seeing the option to only allow three of the five to continue as the only reasonable option. But Gon's clever solution allows them all to finish, and he's praised by Kilua, who once again recognizes Gon's ability to think outside the box to get around the restrictions placed on him. And so the third phase ends, which is where I'll end part two of Shin Yu. We'll finish up the Hunter exam in part three, where I'll also likely provide some extra analysis on the growth of Gon and Kilua's relationship through the entire arc. So I do hope you stick around by subscribing, go ahead and rate the video, and I'll see you all in the comments. Bye.